We looked at the best NBA player from every physical category. Now we're looking at the best all-time NBA player from every major category actually within the game of basketball. And let's start first with an easy one, three-pointers. But first, I want to give a huge shout out to Magic Spoon. If you somehow still haven't heard of Magic Spoon, they make delicious and healthy cereal with tons of never boring flavors that, listen to this, are actually good for you. That's right, they've finally done it. A healthy breakfast that tastes good too. Magic Spoon cereals have zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. Only 140 calories per serving too. They're also keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, soy free, and low carb so they got it all covered. Recently I've realized it's really tough to find a good breakfast that's actually healthy for you. Donuts, muffins, buttered toast, pancakes, and cereals full of sugar and junk are what we're made to believe is a good breakfast to start your day. But if you care about what you eat and want to start your day off right, Magic Spoon's the way to go. They have a ton of flavors too but personally I've been starting my day off with a cinnamon flavor. It's great and I'm not left feeling drained the rest of the day so go ahead and click the link below to grab a variety pack and try it today and be sure to use the promo code sweat at checkout to get $5 off any order or go to magicspoon.com slash sweat. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. So click the link below and use the code sweat for $5 off or go to magicspoon.com slash sweat to save $5 today. Shout out to them for sponsoring the video. Now let's get back to it. Now I know you're supposed to never say never and there's always a chance someone can come along and be a better player than the players before them. But I'm saying it now, there will never be another basketball player that's a better three-point shooter than Steph. Curry. Maybe one day someone will come along and get an earlier start to break his all-time three-point record, but no one will ever hit them in the manner Steph has. Threes from the logo, big shots when they mattered, threes off of one leg, 107 straight threes in practice, or turning their back to the basket the way he does. There's a lot of spot-up shooters in the history of the NBA that statistically may shoot better than him, but no one that makes them at both the same quality and quantity that Curry does. When we look at dunks, we have to break it into two categories, dunk contest dunks and in-game dunks. For the dunk contest, I really had to give the spot to both Zach Levine and Aaron Gordon. I'm not making that decision on who was better. If I'm being honest though, I did like Aaron Dunks more than Levine's and I feel maybe he should have won back in 2016. And a lot of other people feel that way too, but a lot of people also feel Zach was the clear winner with his free throw line dunks. I'll say it like this, Gordon was much better with the props that he used, like the magic mascot and dunking over Taco Fall, while Levine did better with just the pure dunks that he put out there in both contests. So these guys will be co-owners of this spot. Well for in-game dunkers, I think it's an easy choice to be Vince Carter, because he just had flashier dunks than anyone else we've ever seen. And combine that with the amount of them that he also had on and over people and it's an easy choice. He's easily one of the best pure dunkers ever and no matter where his point guards would throw the ball, as long as it was somewhere near the rim, he would go get it. And the fact that all of his dunks were just split decisions on whether to dunk on a center, hit a 360 or a double clutch it on the spot were what made him so fun to watch. Mid-range shots are a different story because they're some of the most boring shots possible on an NBA court. But they're also one of the most effective and back before threes were taken 50 times a game, Michael Jordan perfected the mid-range shot and still hit them better than anyone else in NBA history has. And it makes sense, when it came to shooting, that was the shot back then. Threes were rarely taken, but now they're taken so often and anything between a three and a layup is so rare, that's what's going to make it so hard for someone else to ever come along and take the spot from Jordan. There's still a few guys in the league today that make a case like DeRozan, KD, and Chris Paul who are all definitely up there all time. But MJ specialized in it and it was a huge part of what made his overall game so dangerous. Now in terms of all-time great passers, Magic Johnson's the guy. There was a lot to choose from and so many different ways to go with it. Steve Nash, Chris Paul, John Stockton, Oscar Robertson, but Magic's ability to throw legitimate no-look passes, throw them behind the back or those one-on rocket passes, with flashiness like no one else is what set him apart. The fact that no one knew where the ball was going to end up on a Lakers fast break was what set him up for a ton of points and set those Lakers teams up to be the Showtime Lakers. His passes were always pinpoint accurate too, and I know you may be wondering why the all-time assist leader John Stockton doesn't have the spot, even though he once led the NBA for 9 straight years as the assisting leader and averaged 14 assists a game twice in his career. Well, John had an Iron Man career that was very long alongside Carl Malone who had the same. And that's where most of his assists came from. Well Magic Johnson had the opposite because his career was cut short. But he still managed to make it 6 on the all time assist list. And as for Steve Nash who I saw come up a lot in these talks, he's about as good of a passer as you could get. He couldn't have done much more to up his game. He had the 5 years leading the league, he had the flashy passes, but Magic was just one slight step ahead of him. While for rebounding, statistically the best rebounder we've ever seen in NBA history is without a doubt Will Chamberlain. He led the NBA in rebounding 11 times in his career and also had 11 seasons averaging 20 rebounds a game, numbers we have never seen since him. He also holds the record for most rebounds a game for a season with 27.2. For a 7-1 guy that could jump as high as Wilt could and was way ahead of his time, these stats aren't surprising to anyone. And Bill Russell was right there with them. They're 1-2 and two all time when it comes to rebounding, at least statistically. Because Dennis Rodman could be considered the all time greatest in NBA history depending on how you look at it. If you account for his height and the competition he went up against, you could make that argument. He was only 6'7", led the NBA in rebounds for 7 straight 
straight years and averaged 18 a game in two of them. All I'm saying is if Dennis was 7-1 and had Wilt's vertical, he probably would have put him to shame. Now when it comes to steals, things get a little tricky because how do you really determine who the best dealer in NBA history is? There's really only one way to steal the ball, so it's not based off of anything else besides numbers here. And it boils down to three men, Michael Jordan, John Stockton, and Chris Paul. And there's a few important stats to look over here. Chris Paul led the NBA in steals six times in his career, which is way more than both other men. But if you actually look into the numbers at what their per game averages were in their best season, Chris didn't really stack up, so we can put him out of the equation. While Jordan and Stockton's averages match up pretty nicely, but now you have to remember John Stockton is the NBA's all-time leading steals leader with a pretty good margin over Michael. But you also have to remember Stockton played 50% more games than Jordan did, which brings us back to the argument of his Iron Man career that John had, which gives him an unfair advantage in a lot of these talks. And combine that with the idea that MJ stacks up pretty nicely next to Stockton, even though at the same time he was being arguably the most dominant scorer ever, and it's safe to say he was probably the better player in steals. Because if he was given the opportunity to focus less on offense and more on defense and getting steals, this probably wouldn't even be an argument. For the best shot blocker in NBA history, we can only talk about after 1975 when blocks started to be officially tracked. So right off the bat, no Bill Russell, no Will Chamberlain, who we know most likely would have ended up here. Now at first thought, a lot of people will think of a guy like Dikembe Mutombo, but I have to give this one to Mark Eaton. He was a 7-4 center that averaged 5 blocks a game one season, over 4 blocks a game 3 times, and over 3 blocks a game in 3 others. His height obviously gave him a huge advantage that no one could really compete with in this category, but he still deserves a lot of credit. Not only did he lead the NBA in blocks 4 times, but he was Defensive Player of the Year twice, and even though he never averaged double digits in points, he still even got some MVP votes in 1985 for just how good he was defensively as the anchor of his team. And not even to mention his 5.6 blocks a game is by far an NBA record that will never be touched again. And while we're on the same theme of defense, we can stay there. Blocks and rim protection is interior defense, but what about on-ball defense on the perimeter? Well, the first and only guy that should come to mind is Dennis Rodman, who not only is the best perimeter defender the game's ever seen, but I would say he's also the best overall defender. He was 6 foot 7 and could guard anyone from Magic Johnson to Shaq. We have guys today that could guard both centers and guards, guys like Giannis and Ben Simmons, but even they wouldn't have been able to put up with O'Neal the way Rodman did, which makes it pretty surprising that he only ever won two defensive player awards. He was useless on offense, but that goes to show that his rebounding and defense were so elite that it was still more than effective to leave him on the court. I mean, around the perimeter, it was nearly impossible to get around a 6-7 guy that played as rough and dirty as Dennis did. He was a guy that would shove you to the side when he came driving down the lane, or wouldn't care to sacrifice his body to step up and take a charge when needed. So while there's a ton of great perimeter defenders in league history, Dennis Rodman at least has my vote for greatest of all time. On a completely different end of the spectrum, free throw shooting is an art of its own, and there's evidence in that by the fact of how terrible a guy like Dennis Rodman was at it. But with that said, it's without a doubt clear that Steph Curry is the all-time best, the best at threes and free throws, and it makes sense because the shooting technique easily just transfers over from one to the other. The better the form and foundation, the easier it would be to carry over. Which is why centers like Shaq struggle so much to make free throws, because they have no foundation or shooting form at all to build off of. But Curry just barely beats out a guy like Steve Nash, and even though a guy like Jose Calderon has the all-time free throw percentage record for a single season at over 98%, record that no one will ever touch again, no one has a better career percentage than Steph Curry. The most clutch player to ever play the game is also Michael Jordan, who's been pretty dominant in this video. There's a lot of clutch players in the game today, Kevin Durant, Kawhi Leonard, Damian Lillard, Jimmy Butler, LeBron James, but when it comes to all-time, MJ's really unmatched with an all-time high of 25 game winners throughout his career and 9 of them being buzzer beaters, which includes two of the biggest buzzer beaters of all time, with the shot over Craig Elo to finish off the series and take out the Cavs, and the shot that ended his career on a championship over Byron Russell. A lot of players are scared of these big moments and final shots, and when it comes down to it, guys panic and get stressed and sometimes don't know what to do. But Jordan was built different because it was almost like he was hoping it would come down to having to hit a buzzer beater. He thrived in those moments more than anyone else, and it was part of what made him him. Is there anything you disagree on? If so, comment and let me know, and I'm out.